Call the meeting order. Roll call. Roll call, please. Councilmember Garcia here. Councilmember Kennedy here. Councilmember Vias here. Mayor Pro Tem McEachran here. Mayor Cox here. There um, would be a statement that I would read on persons wanting to address the council. However, there is no one here to address the council. We will be going into uh, uh, public comments again when we go back into our regular council meeting at six. And so at this time, uh, we're, no one, no cards, no one to speak. I will call on the city attorney in regard to the closed session items. Thank you, Mayor Cox. We have four closed session items this evening. One for the airport authority, which is existing litigation, pursuant to government code 54956.9D1, and the names of the parties as well as the case number was set forth on the agenda. Item B is the same matter under the uh, under the heading for the City Council. In addition, we have two other City Council actions, both anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D2, uh, uh, and there are existing facts and circumstances that indicate there is a threat of litigation. Those facts and circumstances are set forth uh, on both of the agenda items, and as well as the potential plaintiffs. Uh, we are uh, we would, to the extent there's any reportable action, we would report that either at the conclusion of the closed session or at the commencement of the regular meeting at 6 o'clock. Um, thank you. City Attorney, are there any questions or comments from the council members? If not, at this time, at 5.01, we're going to adjourn to closed session. This is C and D. At this point, there is no reportable action. However, the uh, closed session is going to continue uh, to the conclusion of the regular meeting uh, and has been adjourned until that time. So if there's a reportable action at that time, it will be reported at the conclusion of the closed session. Thank you. And because we're running a little late, I jumped to the following page. And so we know we're all here, but roll call, Madam Clerk, and my apologies. Councilmember Garcia? Here. Councilmember Kennedy? Here. Councilmember Vias? Here. Mayor Pro Tem McEachran? Here. Mayor Cox? Here. At this time, we're going to have the invocation uh, by Curtis Green from Burning Baptist Church. Um, Mr. Green, he is here, and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance from Police Chief Sam Lucia, and Sam is in the back. So after the uh, invocation, please remain standing. You would bow with me, please. Dear Lord, we come to you today, Lord God, just thank you for another day that we have not seen, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you've extended towards us, God. Lord, we ask right now that you would just come into this place, Lord God, and your word says that everything be done decently and in order, Lord God. So we pray that this meeting is done decently and in order, Lord. We're also instructed to pray then for those that are over us in authority, Lord God. So we pray for everyone in government, everyone in leadership above us, from the president all the way down to these five city council members, Lord God. And we find it not odd that it's five because five represents your grace, Lord God. So these have been graced to do this work. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Madam City Clerk, I don't see any plaques, and I have no notations. There are no public presentations or anything at this time? No presentations tonight. All right. Thank you very much. Um, would Madam Clerk, present the agenda to the Council, please. There is only one revision on tonight's agenda. That is on agenda item number C4. It is a revised monthly statistics report from the Sheriff's Department, and those are the only revisions. I'm sorry, that's, is that the JAG grant you're talking about? Um, item C4, it is a consent calendar item. Yes. Okay. Yes, the quarterly statistics report from the Sheriff's right. Department. Thank you. First item on the agenda would be appeal hearing. There are none scheduled and none that come before the City Council. Next item is a public hearing. Um, this would be a um, public hearing on a proposed resolution 
Victorville Water District 14-005 entitled a resolution of the Victorville Water District making it making it determinations. I don't think that's correct. Uh, to fix levy and collect standby charges for water improvement districts number one for fiscal year 2013-2014. I do not have any cards from anyone, but at this time, I advertise public hearing. I will open the public hearing on this item. No one wishing to speak on this public hearing item. I will close the public hearing. Any questions from the council members and staff? There are no questions. We can have a, a motion on this, please. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries unanimously. The next item on the agenda would be another public hearing on Resolution Victorville Water District 14-006. A resolution of the Victorville Water District making its determination to fix levy and collect standby charges for the Water Improvement District Number 2 for fiscal years 2013-2014. I have no cards of anyone wishing to speak. However, I will open the public hearing at this time on this item. There's no one coming before the council. I have no cards. I will close the public hearing. Any questions of the staff from council members? There being no questions. Call for the motion. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Vias. Council Member Garcia. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Item number three. Uh, B3 was originally scheduled for a public hearing to be held at the City Council's May 20 meeting. This item is now scheduled for a public hearing to be held in a special meeting of the City Council on May 27. However, because it was advertised, even though it's going to be the same subject, it will be a brand new hearing with a brand new uh, notice of hearing at the newspaper. Uh, if anyone would like to speak at this time, we will take that testimony, but the hearing, the special public hearing will be held May 27. I have no cards. I have no one to speak at this time. Mayor, uh, Mr. City Attorney, can we Close this item out since it's rescheduled or is this to be Correct. Continued? There's no need to even hold the public hearing just since it's on the agenda. If somebody wanted to speak to it, they would have that opportunity, but there's no need to take any action at all. I wanted it to make sure that if anyone didn't get the word that it had been rescheduled, if they wanted to, if they traveled and wanted to be heard, that they could be heard. Apparently, people know that, so there's no reason to continue. That is this correct. The meeting is closed, and so uh, do we take any action at all, or is it just closed no out? Need, no need to take any action at all. It's going to be, it has been fully noticed for the 27th. and No action in this matter is dropped. Item number four is a public hearing, adopt a resolution number 14-025 for fiscal year 14-15, confirming the annual assessment approval for the engineer's report for the city light, citywide street lighting assessment district. There's no questions to the staff. I'm going to open the public hearing. On this item, anyone wants to speak in regard to the citywide street lighting assessment district? I have no cards or notification. No one has responded in writing. I therefore will close the public hearing. Is there any questions of staff? Mr. Mayor, I, even if there's no questions, I would like to clarify one issue that uh, you had raised in the agenda briefing. It uh, happens to be on page 10 of the report. I'm looking for a page number on the PDF and I don't see it, but uh, if you get to the report itself on page 10, uh, there is a chart for expenditures and you appropriately questioned administration at nearly $600,000. Uh, in speaking with uh, the Director of Public Works on that, uh, the term administration was used. However, um, that includes all the labor costs that would normally be included with operations and maintenance the next column over. The actual administrative overhead costs uh, are only about two and a half percent uh, of this uh, of this amount. So, as with the other two public hearing items, uh, this item uh, is uh, no change in the rate, simply a, an affirmation of of the methodologies and the current rates that are being charged. Well, thank you. So there'll be a revision of that uh, to show a reduction in administrative costs. Uh, yes, some of the administrative costs would be put onto operations and maintenance uh, more appropriately uh, in, for that spreadsheet. Um, we'll certainly clear that up for next year if you'd like uh, for the record uh, a memo to the council perhaps that clarifies uh, those exact cost splits. We could do that. 
I, I think it would be helpful, this is a public document, people will look at it and wonder why that administration fee was so high. And, uh, you know, it wasn't universal that everyone was for the street lighting assessment district. It's mm -hmm. good for the city. It's good for the citizens. And we want to make sure that we keep their full support. So that revision would be very helpful, I think, to everyone. Okay. Uh, there's no further question of staff. Call for a motion. Motion by Council Member Garcia, second by Mayor Pro Tem McEachran. <coughs> Council Member Kennedy. Motion carried <coughs> unanimously. Next item on the council agenda is the consent calendar. And this is uh, normally doesn't require any discussion. Uh, this would range from C number one through C20, uh, C22. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. I may have a card to speak on. It's just public comment. Okay. This will be um, yes. The question was, uh, I believe I was present on the 15th and the 22nd. I don't have the minutes open in front of me. I think I was listed as absent at one of these meetings. I believe that was the 29th. 29th. Mm -hmm. And assuming that's I'm the one abstain. I was absent at, I will abstain from voting on C3. C3. All right. We'll note that for the record as an abstention. Are there any requests from the council to pull any of the items from the consent calendar? If not, then ready for a motion for the approval of consent item C1 through C22. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachran, second by Council Member Baez. Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the City Council is, is under D1, Written Communications. Um, that is a request for the Council to award a contract to signature offset in the amount not to exceed $33,000 to furnish and deliver, to deliver recreational brochures to various residents located throughout the city, as budgeted, by the way. Questions of staff? If not, motion be in order. Motion by Council Member Garcia, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries unanimously. Item number two, resolution number 14-026, proposed physical confirmation agreement exhibit one, resolution of the City Council of the City of Victorville approving the form of a physical confirmation agreement and the terms and conditions of the attachment thereto concerning a power purchase and sales transaction between the city and Nextera Energy Power Marketing LLC and authorizing the city manager to execute such agreement on concurrence of certain conditions. Are there any questions of staff? Yeah, um, can somebody explain why this is called a physical confirmation agreement rather than just an agreement, a purchase agreement? What what is the meaning of that physical confirmation? You know, I'm going to have to defer to the city attorney to see if he knows the answer to that because I do not. I unfortunately do not either. I suspect it's a function of just usage over the years that this is the form document they have always used and somehow somebody developed the physical confirmation <laughs> designation on it, but I'm it, not sure it, what the... doesn't seem particularly material as far as it, it is an agreement. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that it really adds much to call it a physical confirmation agreement. Perhaps that makes it something other than a verbal. I don't. I don't know. We're entering into an agreement to entering buy something. Into an agreement if we to, buy uh, to potentially buy from this uh, power marketing group uh, in the future, uh, as we need power for our electric customers. Uh, the city council has authorized the city manager to purchase that power. Typically, those power purchases come rather quickly because there's a deal. Uh, and so there's a certain authority uh, yielded uh, through uh, resolution to the city manager to do that. This is essentially adding one more option uh, to purchase power from. Uh, when we do this, we buy the cheapest power we can. So it's all the same quality. 
and it looks almost the same as D3, which is called a master power purchase and sale agreement. It, it is. That's the form of the agreement that the Shell Corporation uses. Okay. Thank you. Any other further questions? I'll call for the motion. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachern, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Item three, the master power purchase agreement and sales agreement including cost sheet collateral annex including paragraph 10. It's a request to execute a master power purchase and sale agreement with Shell Energy North American per and US LP. Any questions of staff? Not call for the question. Motion by Council Member Viaz, second by Council Member Garcia. Or I meant to say call the motion, same thing. Motion carries unanimously. Item four, and this is the, no, this is different. Uh, this is a, submitted by our police chief, and this is a copy of the two, 2014 Justice Assistant Grant Award Agreement and the JAG Grant Expenditure Plan. This uh, recommendation is that the City Council ratify the expenditure plan for the JAG allocation for 2014-15 and authorize the city manager or his designee to process all documents required by the program, required for the program. Any question of staff, if not, call for the motion, please. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Next agenda item, agenda item number five. This is a navigation easement for Southern California Logistic Airport. The recommendation from staff is that the city council, or in this case the direct, the honorable body, uh, which is uh, the directors of the airport, adopt the form of a navigation easement for Southern California Logistics Airport and approve SCLA resolution number 14-001. Are there any questions of staff? Yes, I'm afraid there are. I'm a pretty well-educated guy, and in my entire life, I have never seen the word navigation. Could somebody explain to me what an navigation easement? I thought it was a typo. I thought you stuck before, a D in. Before Keith starts to explain it, I'd like to comment that maybe I'm not as well-educated as you, but I made the exact same comment when in staff meeting. Is that a real word? I'd never, ever heard that word before. It is not in the dictionary. When I, I typed it you. into Microsoft Word, that red squiggly came underneath <laughs> it and said there was something wrong, but it is a, a, a used term in, in uh, aviation. What's it mean? Uh, it's, it's basically um, to allow for the aviation or the flight over um, a property. Air navigation. The I navigation think is the term. for the aviation. Navi Air navigation. 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 Why didn't they put an N on the front of it? It would work it's so much better. Aviation and navigation combined. Do we have any other questions, Esther? <laughs> not call for the motion, please. I hope not. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. The next item is the uh, airport influence area boundary map uh, for the set for SCLA. Recommendation that the city, that this honorable body, the directors of the SCLA, adopt an air for, airport influence area boundary map for SCLA. SCLA resolution number 14-002. And I think this one will have a map attached. Yes, it is. In the back of the last page, it shows you what those boundaries are. Are there any questions of staff on this item? If none, call for the motion. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Council Member Garcia. Motion carries unanimously. Item number seven, amendment one to standard lease agreement for buildings 780 and 789, uh, Southern California Aviation SCLA. Recommendation is that the Board of Directors enter into amendment one for the standard lease agreement by and between 
uh, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority and Southern California Aviation approve a rent credit to fund repairs in the amount not to exceed $45,235 for fiscal year 14-15. Any questions of staff? If none, call for the motion. Motion by Councilmember Vias, second by Councilmember Garcia. Motion carries unanimously. Next item, item number eight, additional appropriations for routine maintenance and repair for the off-airport properties B and D parcels. The recommendation is that Board of Directors approve an additional appropriation in the amount of $25,000 in support of future maintenance and repair expenses for facilities located on off-airport properties. And these are B and D parcels, and I'm sure you're familiar with those. Any questions of staff? No questions. Call for the motion, please. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachran, second by Councilmember Garcia. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is item nine. This is a termination and settlement agreement. Um, recommendation that the successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency adopt resolution R S eight 14 002 approving the termination and settlement agreement by and between the successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency and Matthew C. Drake. Any questions of the Council of Staff? Very lengthy. It's very interesting reading. It's about time we settle this. I have no questions. Call for the motion, please. Motion by Councilmember Vias, second by Councilmember Garcia. Motion carries unanimously. Next item, item number 10, lead track use permit, uh, Church and Dwight. The City Council, the recommendation City Council approve the attached revised lead track use permit by and between the City of Victorville and Church and Dwight Company. A question? Call for the motion, please. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Council Member Garcia. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is item number 11. This is, uh, this is adoption of successor agency budget for January 1 uh, to June 30, 2014 for Victorville's portion of the Victor Valley, uh, that's the VEDA project, project area and adoption of SCLA's related debt service um, budget recommendation from staff, particularly Mr. Metzer, is that this be adopted. Questions of staff? Yes, uh, Keith. I'm looking at this uh, at this budget and uh, taking into account the property tax distribution we received from Vita in March and cash on hand. We have enough to cover this obligation for June 30th. Am I right? Uh, yeah, the the upcoming debt service obligations due June 1st, and, and effectively what this is doing is is uh, the city had actually collected the revenues from Vita but never accounted for it. So effectively it's been sitting in accounts. So this is cleaning up the, the appropriation on the revenue and expense side so that uh, time come June 1st that the actual debt service payments can be paid. Is, th is this a catch up payment for when we were late in December? No, no, no that's this is, been this done. is actually the accounting for having recognized the collection probably back in February or March when, when we actually received the funds. And the next payment we're gonna make is in December? Uh, our next payment should be due June 1st. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, after this one. After that would be December 1st. December 1st. And between between now and then, uh, there should also be, um, I guess the next op, uh, the next payment would probably be in July that we would, uh, actually VITA would receive something in July and then VITA has to go through its accounting and then distribute We'll see it probably in August or September. August, September, yeah. And will we have sufficient funds on hand to cover that December payment? Um, all of them, I do not believe so. We haven't done the accounting and we haven't done the forecasting, but I, I would expect that we're still in a deficit position. So we, we will still, and we know this today, so when it hits the newspapers, that's when we're in default, it's a technical late payment come next December. Right, right. We're seeing revenues increasing, uh, but just not uh, meaningful not quite enough, enough. To, to, to catch up. Thank you. Any further questions of staff by council? 
If not, call for the question on this item. Motion by Councilmember Kennedy, second by Councilmember Garcia. Motion carries unanimously. Item number 12, um, bid submittal summary. City Council, the, the subject here is to approve the contract award Number JM14-067 for the construction of Cashier's Expansion at City Hall. 24-ACE Construction Inc. in the amount not to exceed $124,987. Recommendation is to adopt. Any questions, staff? If there are no questions, a motion will be in order. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Mayor Pro Tem McEachran. Motion carries unanimously. Does this mean the lines will be reduced, Doug? Uh, lines actually have already been reduced. They'll be more efficient after we get this done. Very good. The next item, I'm going to make a comment about the lions, but that's okay. The next item is a Calstripe Inc. construction agreement for painting uh, rubber removal, paint removal, Southern California Logistics Airport. Um, this is a construction agreement. It's Amendment 1 to the construction agreement in the amount of $52,447.19. Recommendation is to approve. Any questions of staff? If there are no questions, motion would be in order. Motion by Council Member Garcia, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carried unanimously. Next item, item number 14, is uh, you, have a, you have in your agenda a location map, a detail map, an agreement for purchase and sale, purchase of Victor Valley Water, Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority's percolation pond number 14. Uh, the City Council and the Water District approve the acquisition of percolation pond 14 from Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority and approve the agreement for purchase and sale. Um, it says the budget is 647000 but the project cost is, is 173250 uh, Is that, are we approving then, Mr. McGlade, 173250 I could ask, answer that, actually. It is, that's what you would be approving is the okay. 173250 so yes, that's, that's, that, that's the approval. And Mayor Cox, for the record, uh, it should oh. be noted that Council Member Vias has left the dais and is not participating in this as she is an employee of the VVWRA. And while I don't believe it's an FPPC conflict, it would avoid any well, possible thank, appearance of bias. Thank you for bringing that to uh, my attention. Uh, are there any questions of Mr. McGlade or staff? Sean, we have your assurance this is the final agreement. Just nod your head. You don't have to walk <laughs> up. Thank you. <laughs> he, he nodded his head affirmatively. If there are enough other questions of staff, motion will be in order. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Garcia. Motion carries with Council Member Vias absent. That member remind uh, Council Member Vias that she can return to the. Mr. Mayor, I would really like to thank uh, uh, Sean McGlade, his staff, and Doug Robertson's help on this, getting this done. It's been a project. The record will show Council Member Vice has returned uh, to the Council. Next item, item number 15, is runway closure equipment purchase. With the recommendation that your Honorable Board of Directors approve the purchase of runway closure equipment from West Coast Sales JT Industries in the amount of $73,300. Are there any questions of staff on this item? If there are no questions, a motion will be in order. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachran, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries unanimously. The next item, uh, I'm going I'm to read it, but I'm going to ask Doug Robertson for a very short explanation because there have been some discussions that we have a consultant that's studying the matter and we're not into the budget, yes. And on the surface, it appeared to be premature. It's not. Once we've got the explanation, it'll make sense. But this is a copy of the 34th Amendment to Law Enforcement Contract 94-909 uh, for uh, police services for the city of Victorville. 
in the amount of $19,702,731. Uh, Mr. Robinson, please. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, actually last Wednesday when senior staff went through the agenda, I indicated to our police chief that we needed to pull this item uh, because there, we are still in discussion about adding police officers. Uh, in fact, we're looking forward to uh, continuing that discussion next week uh, with some options to add uh, a few more, I'll say, um, that will be uh, discussed next week. But um, after hearing me out, uh, Chief Lucia was very polite in reminding me that uh, if I wanted law enforcement services on July 1, uh, that we needed to have an approved uh, contract. So essentially this approves the current level of service, uh, assuming you want to at least continue that. And then uh, we would be uh, adding deputies uh, pursuant to direction potentially next week or uh, at the, the final budget. Um, it would be an amendment to uh, essentially this agreement. Uh, but this uh, allows us to uh, send a signed contract to the county, which they require, uh, before they'll vote on it. So in order to get in line with the rest of the cities who are also doing the same thing, they need to at least know that we are going to continue our current level of service and any uh, additional level of service that uh, would come out of the budget discussions would be added through another amendment. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we need to correct the obvious typographical error here. The contract itself is right, but this and the staff report talks about July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2014. That needs to be 2015. Yes, that would be the actual recommendation with that to uh, whoever makes the motion that it would include that correction. Thank you, Councilmember Kennedy. I thank you for that explanation. I did not want uh, a misunderstanding that somehow we were going to not discuss this or continue with the same level because every single council member has pledged to look at this closely and add law enforcement if we possibly can. That extent hasn't been determined, but. I didn't want a misunderstanding. No further questions. Open to uh, motion. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Mayor Pro Tem McEachern. Motion carries unanimously. Next item, item number 17. Uh, this is a communication system virtualization project. City Council and Directors to approve this purchase, uh, the project cost is $92,619. Uh, I looked at it. I read it. I do not understand it. Doug, short explanation, please. Uh, yeah, we have a uh, need for additional servers uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, not only are we growing, our, the volume of information that we store is growing. And uh, because of the, the SEC case, uh, that volume cannot be purged uh, because we're required to keep it all. So. Um, essentially, we need uh, additional storage capacity, additional server capacity, and this would uh, take our servers uh, that we need into the cloud. It's cloud computing uh, so that the cost is reduced. And that explanation initially is what threw me because we're going to move the applications to the city's private cloud, and I didn't know we had one. <laughs> but now I understand what it is, so there's no further questions. It's going to rain on you. <laughs> Probably will. Like virtualizing Probably that too. It's like so. virtualizing your shot to the green. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> visualizing. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's different. Uh, Mr. Motion Mayor, I was going to ask you to explain it since I would explained it to you in, in our agenda briefing, but yeah, and I keep going over that explanation, trying to fully comprehend it. Bill Webb is responsible for this, right? Bill, nod your head. Thank you. Make sure. All right, no further questions. Motion. Motion by Council Member Garcia, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is agenda number nine, uh, agenda item number 18, presentation of project update for Metro High Desert Corridor project by Melissa Hogwin. Uh, Ariano Associates, did I get that right? No, I didn't, I guess. Good evening, everybody. Danielle Valentino with LA County Metro. Apologies for the misunderstanding in the agenda. Uh, Melissa's part of our team as well on the outreach. Uh, I'm here this evening with our project team for the High Desert Corridor, and I'm sure, uh, pretty much I'm sure all of you have heard of the project to some degree. 
And uh, I, we did bring a video. Is it possible to show the video? It's about two minutes long. Are you showing the video or the PowerPoint presentation? Uh, we'd like to show both if possible. They're about under, together, they're probably under about seven minutes, about seven minutes. Council it's up to you. Go ahead. Thank you. This is our PowerPoint uh, slide, and we can show you this and then uh, queue up the video if you'd like, either after or before. I, I, we, we sent it ahead, if whatever is your preference. That's, that's council's oh. decision. Would you prefer the video first or the presentation? If you are prepared to proceed, I think that it would be more efficient to you to proceed as you're prepared to. Okay, sounds great. Uh, again, uh, I'm with the project team this evening. To my left here is Will Lamborn. He's the interim project manager. And also Carl Price is our senior environmental specialist on the High Desert Corridor project with Caltrans. And Lori uh, Hunter's in the back of the room here. She represents the Joint Powers Authority. Uh, next slide. Our project partners for the High Desert Corridor include Metro, Caltrans, uh, the, the HDC Joint Powers Authority, Sandbag, SCAG, and also the cities of Victorville, Adelanto, Lancaster, Palmdale, Town of Apple Valley, LA County, as well as San Bernardino County. So all of the stakeholders on, on that slide are, are involved in the High Desert Corridor project development process. They've been at the table throughout uh, the project development and we are in the environmental study phase. So the purpose of coming out today is really to share with you uh, you know, that we are in the environmental study phase on a 63-mile uh, corridor that extends from the city of Palmdale uh, out uh, just past around Apple Valley. So that whole corridor is being considered as a potential multi-purpose corridor that could include highway, it could include high-speed rail, it could also include green energy uh, in infrastructure as well as a bikeway. Uh, so what, what we want to share this evening is it really give you a project update on the development of this environmental document. There is not money at this time to fund construction of the project, but there is money available to study the alignment and figure out what may be the best solution in terms of infrastructure uh, between the Palmdale and Victorville uh, uh, Apple Valley endpoints. Uh, we have been working with city staff as well as with uh, the Joint Powers Authority representative. Uh, we really appreciate the involvement of Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Ryan McEachron, thank you very much. We've also worked closely with uh, Brian Gangler and uh, we really do appreciate the uh, more the day-to-day -day and, and ongoing uh, engagement from the city as we really are aiming to develop a project that reflects not just agency, you know, sandbag, metro, San, San Bernardino County, uh, vision, but really is representative of the vision of all the cities and jurisdictions along the alignment. So uh, at this phase, we are actually moving to release the environmental document for public review and comment. So uh, by August, mid-August, we hope to uh, actually release the document for your city's review and public review by all the cities and stakeholders and allow for formal public hearings to take place uh, by September, uh, early fall time frame. And so the goal of this evening is to give you kind of an update on the project from the team as well as in encourage you to stay engaged with the team as we uh, move to this major milestone of releasing the environmental document. And with that, I'll turn it over to Carl. I'm sorry, I'll turn it over to Will first. He's going to give you a quick update. Next slide. Uh, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. I'm Will Lamborn, the interim project manager for High Desert Corridor. Um, just real briefly, we'll go over some of the, the purpose and need behind the project, which is really our reason to carry it out to begin with. There are a lot of different goals and objectives related to it. Um, part of it, as you see sort of in this list, is to address recent projected population growth in the future in the High Desert region, both in the Antelope and Victor Valleys. And with that growth and with kind of the, the lack of reliable transportation options going east-west that exists now, another part of that is to increase capacity and um, safe east-west travel options uh, up here in the high desert. Um, along with that, another goal is to improve options for regional goods movement and improving the regional goods movement network. Um, and with that as well, with um, providing improved access and connections to regional transportation infrastructure, both existing and proposed in the future, which includes uh, both airports and passenger rail, 
and um, other improvements that are coming in the future um, in this area and also in the Palmdale area. And um, lastly, one of the goals of this project in being a real multi-purpose uh, sustainable corridor is to try to contribute to statewide greenhouse gas reduction goals. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here you can see a map that's just really the uh, basic high desert corridor alignment. You can see the orange line going across the top. That's the main alignment um, of the high desert corridor. In purple, you also see those four different dips, which represent physical variations, A, D, uh, B, and E, where the highway and or the rail would actually flare out in a way to avoid impacts to, to communities and different resources at those particular locations. Uh, the small triangles that you see on there as well, which are yellow, represent proposed ramp locations, um, which were uh, come to as a result of our traffic study and also uh, expected land use in those areas. And lastly, I want to mention you also see those two bubbles at each end. Uh, those have been areas of, of special attention and study, which is where the high-speed rail component of the project, the alternatives that include high-speed rail, would connect uh, in Palmdale to the Palmdale Transportation Center and over here in the Victor Valley to the proposed future Express West Station, uh, which would be the terminus of the rail on the eastern end of the project. Uh, next slide, please. And so as we've alluded to a couple times, and Danielle did too, the idea with this project is that it would truly be sustainable and multi-purpose. So this includes several different project components. Um, one would be a freeway expressway. Um, another is a central segment approximately between 100th Street East and US 395 that is being looked at as a potential segment for tolling. Uh, we're also looking at space in the right of way for potential green energy transmission and production. Um, also on the side of the right of way, we're looking at a fully separated bikeway. And lastly, as we mentioned as well, uh, some of the alternatives include a uh, high-speed rail feeder system, which would connect to proposed systems at each end of the High Desert Corridor, both California High-Speed Rail on the west and the proposed Express West system connecting to Las Vegas on the east. Uh, next slide. So with that, that brings us to the actual alternatives that are being considered as part of the environmental document, um, which are kind of a combination of all of those different components which we just mentioned right now. Um, so there are, there's an alternative which is just the freeway expressway. There's an alternative that's the freeway expressway with the tolled portion in the middle. Um, then similarly, there's an option of the freeway expressway with the rail and an option of the freeway expressway with the rail and with the toll. Um, we also have in there what's being called a hybrid corridor alternative, which, would could, which could basically be a combination of any of those aforementioned parts um, pieced together in the combination that's decided to be most appropriate. And of course, as we're required by law, we're also looking at a no build. Um, next slide. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Carl Price, who's our environmental planner with Caltrans, to just briefly touch on uh, the environmental process itself. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> now, as uh, was mentioned, we're going through the environmental process currently. Um, we are preparing an environmental impact report, environmental impact statement, um, and Caltrans is acting as the lead agency for both NEPA and CEQA during this process. Now, on the slide, you can see the um, just a, a generalized um, uh, shot of the process that we're going through. Uh, we began back in December of 2010 during scoping. Uh, we held a series of meetings throughout the corridor uh, to try to uh, get public input on the project, uh, see what, uh, to introduce the project to the public and get input, uh, see what kind of comments people might make or, or um, what the interest was in the public. Um, we took the input from the public, um, um, and we began actually performing our environmental studies, um, and that process uh, has been continuing since then. Um, you know, we are at the point now where we've we've gone through and completed most of our studies. We still have a few that are that are still uh, to be completed. Um, we've identified the impacts associated with the various resources and various alternatives that we're looking at. Um, we screened out a few alternatives that um, either have um, excessive impacts or just don't seem to make sense anymore based on um, the current situation and, and public input. Um, you know, we are currently uh, preparing our draft environmental document, um, which we anticipate having out uh, for public circulation in late summer uh, of this year. Um, we will hold a series of public hearings uh, along the corridor, probably four hearings uh, spread out throughout the corridor to gauge public input. Um, take comments from the public and from, from uh, 
the cities and other agencies. Uh, we'll take that input, um, address the comments, address the questions, make any modifications that need to be made, um, and then prepare a final environmental document based on that input um, in the spring of, of 2015. Um, throughout this process, you know, our design team on both the highway side and the rail side, they're, um, they're doing their preliminary engineering, um, you know, modifying the design as needed and as appropriate to, to address some of the concerns that have been raised throughout this process. Um, and, you know, you know, we've had an extensive um, public involvement process along, you know, throughout this entire uh, four plus years that we've been going through. Um, so between, between the, uh, the input from the public and the studies that we've, that we've been conducting, you know, we've kind of refined our project over time um, and that's what will be presented, you know, to the public um, in the draft environmental document. Okay. Next slide, please. So these are um, 20 some odd uh, resource categories that we're studying uh, in our, in our, for our project. Um, you know, as I mentioned, most of the studies are complete. We've got a few that are still, still need to be complete, but they'll be um, uh, finished very soon now. And of course, the, the results of these studies will be incorporated into our environmental document uh, and will form the basis of our final decision on, on how to move forward and which alternative would be selected. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Danielle and she'll provide more information about the public outreach. Thank you again. Uh, just to wrap it up, we, we really are just really uh, wanting to thank you for your engagement and involvement of the city staff and to just remind you that uh, you do have representation in this project through the partners uh, group who, who meets uh, pretty periodically and then also the Joint Powers Authority which has a lot of uh, uh, regional and local representation as well. But if there's anything more we can do to uh, make sure you're getting the information you need or anything more we can do to support your city as we continue on, please reach out. Um, our big commitment is uh, not just to do the legally required scoping and public hearing the two for the, the process, we really want to make sure we are um, hearing the cities along the way. Uh, to date, in term, just next slide please. To date we've had about 18 uh, public meetings, 28 elected and city staff meetings throughout the corridor. We've had seven corridor project partner agency briefings, 13 uh, events along the corridor, open houses, and then six interest group briefings with WTS and other organizations. Uh, we presented at the High Desert Corridor Opportunity Conference and also recently uh, participated in the air show uh, uh, that's in the other county, uh, LA County Air Show, and had a bunch of folks show up for that. Uh, so we continue to look for opportunities to, to get the word out. We've had also 44 stakeholder uh, briefings and meetings throughout the corridor and then also two media briefings on both sides of the county. I'm uh, just trying to make sure we're keeping our media folks aware of the project and that way when the environmental document is out on the, uh, at, on the street with the public, uh, it is very much uh, understood what the project is proposing. Uh, we've also had uh, several meetings provided by Ustream on internet. So uh, to wrap it up, uh, we, we do have an online engagement option. So if anybody doesn't want to come to a meeting, they can hop online and participate online. So with that, thank you very much and uh, we look forward to working with you. Thank you. At this time we're on item E1. This is the time where individuals of the public may comment on items of interest, interest to the public. I always have to, uh, before I call anyone up, and I do have a card, but anyone can come up and speak at this time. If we have an agenda item, we try to give sufficient time to everyone that has an item. This last seven minute presentation was 20 minutes. We do that because we want to make sure we don't cut anybody off and that they have their say when it's agendized and we have the information. If we do not have any information but someone's coming up to speak, we give you three minutes because by law we can't engage in a debate, we can't engage in a conversation, and the public did not know what you were going to talk about. So I always apologize that at three minutes I'm going to cut you off because if it's agendized you would have longer time, people would know, and we may have people who would want to show up and talk about that item. At this point in time, anyone may come up and address the council, but I only have one card, Kate Beyer.
Come Hello, on. council members. My name is Kate Beyer, and I am the new public information officer for Victor Valley Wastewater. And I just wanted to come today to formally introduce myself to you. Um, a little background about me. I grew up in the high desert. Uh, I've lived in the Victor Valley most of my life. I was born at St. Mary's, went to Mojave Vista Elementary, Victor Valley Junior High School when that was still around. And uh, I graduated from Apple Valley High. Um, I have my degree in uh, environmental science from Humboldt State University. I was offered a job in the wastewater industry. And uh, my interest in the wastewater industry is its ability to be an energy recovery facility. And I'm honored to say that I am now employed by just such an industry or just such an employer. Um, I'd also like, with that being said, I'd like to formally invite you all to our biogas uh, energy project, our ribbon cutting ceremony, which will be held September 26th. Um, this project will allow our, our facility to become 100% energy neutral by the end of this year. We'll be able to use all of the methane that we'll be producing to power our plant. This facility, this technology, is the first of its kind in North America and one of only five in the world. So we're pretty excited uh, to have this here in the Victor Valley. Um, with your permission, I'd like to approach the clerk and give you flyers for our event. You and I encourage um, the public. The clerk. Thank you. I encourage the public, yourselves, your family, and anyone interested to attend. So thank you thank for your you. time. Thank you and welcome. I have no further cards from anyone wanting to address the council. I see no one approaching the microphone. At this point in time, we will go to E2. Reports from the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, only one report. Uh, Mr. Metzler and I were uh, in Las Vegas at the International Council of Shopping Centers uh, recon event. Uh, that was the event where all five cities of the high desert worked together to try to attract uh, specifically new retailers uh, to to our region. And uh, just, I was only able to attend uh, about a little over a day of the show, and it seemed to be more people there and seemed like there was more booths there. Uh, our booth location, uh, we'd prefer to have it a little bit more action, a little bit uh, more in the middle of the of the convention hall. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, they reserved those for for the retailers and and for the for the real estate folks. So, but overall, I think it was a good show. Um, uh, we got uh, some interesting contacts. You never can quite put your finger on. Did we get another X Y Z company to come here? We're not at that point yet, but hopefully, the work that we did will will get us there. Thank you, Doug. Uh, E3 reports from council members. I will start on my left. Councilmember Garcia. Councilmember Cochran. Uh, yeah, actually, a couple of things. Uh, Kate, you, you did my job for me because I was fully prepared to hand out these flyers per your request when I filled in at VVWRA for both Jim Kennedy and our mayor, Jim Cox. Uh, but anyway, I've got flyers here if anybody wants them uh, and then to what Doug was just talking about if I'm sure most of you get the Western City magazine there's a wonderful article in there about all of our cities in the high desert working together for that very purpose and uh, Doug you're holding spyglass there so I'd encourage members of the council to read that if they haven't already um, and then finally uh, county uh, Countywide Vision uh, came out with a document, Business Friendly Best Practices. I've handed this over. I meant to hand it to Bill Webb, but then I was reminded that he's no longer in that de department and suggested I give it to Chris Borchard. So I've given it to Chris Borchard because Bill Webb wants all the uh, fee and tax revenue that comes in via business friendly practices. So, um, But uh, I would encourage you all to take a look at this. Uh, I will make sure you all get copies. Thank you. Councilmember Vias. Um, at my Victor Valley Transit Authority meeting, uh, we took a look at the draft budget. It, it looked okay except for one item on there which concerned me is that the purchase of property over by Midway Appliance um, to put in a transfer center which would include restrooms. And um, if we, if, if that ends up coming into the city of Victorville, um, I think that when the LTF funds do go away, uh, the city's going to be on the hook in the general fund for maintaining and keeping that up. It's going to generate more police calls. 
and we're going to end up assigning a deputy to be a toilet monitor. So I think that it's concerning, and uh, I think the city manager and staff need to get involved with that and um, try to do something. Happy to take a look at it. Thank you, ma'am. Council member. And then also. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not apologize. Did not um, also, I uh, would like to get an update on the golf course of what's going on and what's happening. Um, I think um, those of us on the council that can talk about it would like to know what's happening. Um, there's been some questions, and any, any of them that come to me, I just refer them back to staff. Uh, since I cannot be a participant in that. Um, any other comments, Councilmember Vice? No. Councilmember Kennedy. Uh, just two, a couple things. We have not had a meeting since we got back from Washington, have we? So no one has talked about our trip? I don't think so, obviously. <laughs> Trying to uh, remember, uh, Mayor I, I've, Pro I've been. We've had so many meetings. It's yeah, like, I've, I've had quite a few meetings. Not, I think we I probably don't... have had a meeting since then. Oh, so. well, if it hasn't been discussed, there were four of us: Keith and Doug and Ryan and I went uh, along with Apple Valley and uh, Hesperia. Hesperia? Uh, no, uh, no, uh, Mayor Adelante was, not was present. there, and actually uh, the general manager of VBWA was there. Yeah. And had some, uh, we had just two full days of meetings, and I think most were productive. Uh, we met with FAA on some airport issues. Uh, we also had a full house at the Department of Transportation where we did some very serious and sophisticated begging for road money to finish that uh, Yuckaloma Bridge. Uh, and we'll, we'll just see. I don't think any of us came out of that with... A great deal of optimism because they told us all the reasons most projects don't get funded. But uh, we think we're high on their list, so we'll see. Um, the other thing, and, and I'm, I hope I'm not speaking at all out of school here, I missed the meeting last week. Last week? The yeah. workshop on the, the compensation classification study. And, but I did read through it and did not have the opportunity to comment then, so I'm going to offer this comment. Um, last time I checked, government uh, accounts for about 20% of our GDP, but what we'll call the private enterprise system accounts for the other 80% uh, or something in that neighborhood. Uh, that would suggest to me that probably 20% of the employees in the country work for government, and about 80% work out in the private sector. Don't know if that's exactly true, but it's probably something close to that. It occurs to me that it's difficult, and it may be impossible, to do a real evaluation of compensation of our municipal staff in Victorville by only looking at other cities. Uh, I don't know how we can compare what our public employees earn to the total economy without looking at what folks in the private sector earn. And that is a, I think it's an important comparison. Uh, I, and I, to, as far as I could see, that was never part of this classification and compensation study. I, I don't know if I'm suggesting we go back and redo it, but um, it just seems to me that when we're, when we're looking at our compensation, I shouldn't say ours, I'm in the private sector, and we're looking at how we pay public employees, we must be aware of how private sector employees are being paid as well. And that includes all of it. And this, I, I can't pass this up. The, the whole concept of defined benefit pension plans no longer exists in the private sector. It simply doesn't exist. There isn't a company out there that I know of that has defined benefit pension plans, and it's commonplace course in the public sector, and that just has to be factored into this whole process. Councilman Kennedy, on page 29 of the salary study, it states that we extracted private sector data for San Bernardino areas and Economic Research Institute. I saw every city and every public agency listed, but I saw no specific listing from private sector. I requested um, the spreadsheet of where they compared to um, and what exactly they were comparing to have per position. Now, I asked for it seven days ago. still have not received it, but I just heard that it came when I got on the dais. So 
then we'll be able to look at it. But it's going to take quite some time to look through it because with this many employees, this spreadsheet should be thousands of pages, correct? Um, it's essentially one page per position. Um, so for each position, we've got at least all of the different uh, job uh, jobs that were, it was compared to. Uh, and to comment on Councilmember Kennedy's uh, questions or comments, um, it's interesting because uh, last week when we discussed it, uh, one council member had the opposite reaction was why would you compare private sector jobs? And it, it was done where necessary, uh, depending on the job type, if there wasn't enough public uh, uh, jobs uh, that, that would compare to. Uh, my concern of the salary study um, was that we were comparing to private sector jobs. When VVWA did their salary survey, um, the city of Victorville actually um, did not want private sector data put into it because they felt that the salaries would be too high on the private sector because they don't get the benefits on the back end and that the salaries are lower in municipal settings. So, you know, you know, we have to agree to what our commissioners or our member entities want. So my question was, is why are we comparing to the private sector um, in, in this case? And that's why I requested the spreadsheet so I could see if the salaries indeed that are being compared are higher um, in the private sector. Without that spreadsheet, I, I can't tell. And then my other issue was is that. Um, I, I will be surprised if that assumption holds true. Uh -huh. That salaries are higher in the private sector, frankly. And then also, um, then I, I was questioning why were we comparing to cities like Rancho and Redlands, but not Atlanto, and we, we compared, and I'd like to see what positions we actually compared to Mojave Water Agency, and why wasn't Victor Valley Wastewater in this comparison? So those are some questions I had. The consultant could not answer those questions at the time, and I still haven't got an answer for that, so. Well, my assumptions could be wrong. I, I, I'm making assumptions. But I, I just, I would like to see that, those comparisons. Council Member McEachran. Yeah, my apologies. I meant to mention one other thing. I wanted to thank the folks from Metro and Caltrans. Uh, so often I hear about High Desert Corridor so much, especially from a particular person in this room, Lori Hunter, um, that <laughs> <laughs> when we have special presentations, I, I glaze over because I, I live and breathe the project, uh, as you know, being on the Joint Powers Authority as well as Sandbags. So uh, I do appreciate you coming and making that presentation to the council here and the folks that are, are here in the audience. And uh, for the council's benefit, uh, I am on the Joint Powers Authority appointed by our first district supervisor um, and uh, looking forward to approving that environmental document here later this year. And uh, although there's not money to build a project, you can't go even ask for the money to build a project unless you have an environmental document completed. So uh, looking forward to having that done. Um, last, um, I have two items. Number one, when the questions were raised in regard to the salary review last week, at the end of the meeting, I ask Council Member Weiss to please share that information once she received it because I had an interest in it also. But I haven't had that discussion and I haven't received the information. Mr. Kennedy has asked some, for some very good information. I ask that that information be transferred to him so he can review it. That way I will not, and we will not have three council members involved. And at the point in time we have three council members involved, it will be in a public session. Um, also, then, we were a little bit late coming in. I apologize to everyone because we were in executive session. My understanding is that we may have a need to go back into executive session briefly after this council meeting. Council members, is that correct? That is correct. Do we have any further action then coming at this time? If not, I'm going to not adjourn the meeting. But I'm going to adjourn the meeting to the executive session. I'm not going to end the meeting. We will come back in after the executive session and conclude the business at that time, but we have no other agenda items. Is that okay with everyone? That is correct. I would also recommend that when we do adjourn the meeting, we adjourn it to the uh, March 27th, sorry, the May 27th date at 5 p.m. So when we come back in, May 27, did you say, is when we probably, it looks like we will adjourn the meeting to? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. All right, at this point, this concludes the business that we have on the agenda. Thank you very much for attending, and we will adjourn to executive session.
City Council reconvened uh, the closed session at the conclusion of the regular uh, agenda items. Uh, we have now concluded that closed session. We had closed session on items C and D on the agenda. The agenda sets forth the reasons for the uh, closed session and the appropriate code sections. There is no reportable action with respect to either one of those items. It is now uh, the intention, I believe, of the mayor to now adjourn this meeting to the March 27th, sorry, May 27th date at 5 p.m. That was the decision of the City Council to adjourn this meeting. I indicated before, before we went into executive session, that that probably would be the intent of the Council. That did not change. So this meeting is hereby adjourned until, again for the record, May 27th at 5 p.m., which will be a regular adjourned meeting, and it may also be a special meeting as well. Okay, no other business coming before the Council tonight. This meeting is adjourned until that time.